Hey everybody, Space Cat here. I teach game dev noobs to learn to make their own amazing games in Pico 8. And this is the first video in a series where we make a very, very simple little game together. So I'm not gonna edit this that much. I just want to make a few videos where you can kind of code along with me. And the idea here is we're going to make a super simple farming game. Sort of like Stardew Valley, but kind of a starting point for a game that's, you know, a little bit more complicated like that. By the way, if you're just getting started with game development or maybe just getting started with Pico 8, I have a course called Pico 8 Noob to Pro. We go over my step-by-step -step process to go from game dev noob to being able to create any kind of game in Pico 8. This thing is just packed full of aha moments, and I know it'll help you make your game ideas a reality. It's called Pico 8 Noob to Pro. There's a link in the description or go to spacecatdev.com. We have some goals here. The goals are one, we have a player that can move. Two, we can plant seeds. Three, crops grow. Four, harvest. And I think we'll just start with that. We can add more things later if you guys are really into this series, but I'm a big fan of Stardew Valley and I think that it'd be fun to just do a very simple start to that kind of game. So let's go over and just make a mock-up I like to kind of do this when I'm working on planning a game. And so we'll just start with maybe some green tiles here. This will just be our ground. And actually, I think what I'll do is I'll just make some grass like this. And we're going to put this on a bright green background. Okay. So the idea is in our draw, we have clear screen, but for the color, we're going to make this color 11, just like this. And then we draw our map, save. And now over here, we can kind of add some grass. And if we save and run, we have grass on a green background. Okay. So that's a little bit easy. Just put a couple of these sort of things here to break stuff up. There we go. There's our grassy background and let's do a player and I'm just going to maybe put him over here on Sprite 12. Doesn't really matter. And for now, let's, uh, I was thinking it would be fun to make a little kind of hovering robot guy. Like he's a little robot farmer, mostly because we don't have to animate uh, him walking. He can kind of just be floating. So, you know, we're going to we're going to take the easy route here and I don't know, we'll maybe make some kind of robot here like this. And then maybe he'll have like a little light down there. Maybe he'll be darker on one side. Maybe we'll use that purple instead. Yeah. Have a little shine on him. Mm. Yeah. Something like that. We'll call this good. This is our little uh, farmer robot. I like him. And we'll just call that good for now. So this is Sprite 12. And then we have... So he's going to be kind of wandering around farming things. And then let's give him some vegetables to farm. So I'm thinking maybe there's some, maybe there's a patch that he's kind of tilled or something like that. And we'll just add a couple little pieces like that. Then maybe we'll have one that has seeds on it and then we'll have one that grows a carrot or something we'll have the carrot kind of sticking out like this that's kind of neat a little bit of a shadow we'll make it three wide because then we can have a pointy carrot eventually Okay, and then maybe we'll make a carrot for the inventory. So we'll just 
I don't know, maybe we'll do this kind of thing. And it almost looks like a corn. I don't know. <laughs> sure, that that seems to work. If we make this red down here. I don't know, we don't really have any kind of dark orange, so maybe we'll just go with the red for now. So that's a little carrot, and I think I'll add a little outline to it, just because I know this will be on a green background sometimes. There we go. So this is kind of like our inventory for our carrot. We might change that later, but yeah. And then we'll need some inventory for the seeds. So maybe we'll have like a little seed packet here. You know, and have it have a little label, top and bottom, and there's like a little carrot on it. There we go. That's a little seed packet. That's kind of nice. Add a little color to it, maybe. Eh, I don't know if I like that. Maybe something like that. Okay, there's our little seed packet. And I think we have all the little elements that we need, at least to get started. So let's make a player that can move. That's going to be our first goal. And so let's say function underscore init. That's when we start. And function underscore update. And I think what I'm going to do is break this out into kind of these sub functions I player and U player and draw player like this. And that's just so we can keep things more organized here in our main game loop. So let's make a new tab. And this will be player. And then iPlayer is basically going to be our init function for just the player stuff. I like to kind of break things out like this. It just keeps it a lot more simple. And so then D for draw and U for update. Okay, so in iPlayer, we're going to set up the player and I like to set up the player as a table. So let's say PLR equals two curly brackets. And then within these curly brackets, we can put the different properties for our player. So X equals, let's just start them in the middle 63 and then Y equals 63. And then, um, I think that's probably all we need for now. We don't need a comma after the last um, definition there. So for draw player, we need sprite. I think it's sprite 12. And he's going to be a player X and player Y, like this. And I think if we hit save and run, we'll have our player in the middle there. We've got to get rid of our player here in our mockup. And let's actually draw some something fancy just so we have an idea of how this will look draw a couple of little fields here and this has some crops growing yeah let's just save and run and we have little crops there and we don't have our player moving yet but we can easily do that by saying if button, and then let's do the right arrow. If button right, then player.x plus equals one. Else if button left, then player.x minus equals one. Else if button up, then player dot y minus equals one else if button down then player dot y plus equals one and we end that if all of this can be 
moved back over one, I think. Okay. There we go. This ends the if. And this ends the function you player. Okay. Save run. And now we can move our guy around. Yay. Look at that. That's exciting. Okay. So now we have him moving and we have kind of the general idea of what our farm's supposed to look like. And so what's next on our list here? We have plant seeds. So really what we need to be able to do is to be able to, as our guy moves around, whatever tile he's on, we need to be able to change into a tile where he can till the ground or plant seeds or something like that. And we can do that with our mget and mset functions. So let's just do that in uplayer. And we'll kind of add a couple labels here. So this is movement. And then we'll do uh, plant seeds. And what we want to do is we want to get the tile coordinates of our player, wherever our player is. And our tiles are eight by eight. And so wherever our player is, we're just going to divide the X and the Y value by eight to get our tile. So if he's here, this will be like X five, Y equals two. Okay. So let's make a local variable um, called PT for player tile. And let's just say local PT equals player dot X divided by eight. And let's see, this is PTX. So player tire, player tile X, and then local PTY equals player dot Y divided by eight. If M get, which is going to test what tile we're over, if we give it tile coordinates, uh, PTX, PTY. So if that equals, let's see, I guess we'd equal tile zero. So that means if it's just normal ground, Actually, we probably don't need to do that. It, let's just say if we do a button. So if button X, then let's say M set, which is going to set our tile at PTX, PTY. And we want tile, let's do, let's just have them till the ground first, tile two, okay? So. Let's also say button P. So if we hit X, then we're going to, whatever tile we're over, we're just gonna kind of till that ground, okay? Save run, and now if we hit X, he tills that ground. So that's pretty easy, right? Okay. But it's a little bit difficult to figure out what tile he's going to uh, till because what we're really doing is picking the tile under the upper left hand corner of him, which is slightly awkward. So what we could do is put it like right under him. And that would be a matter of taking this player dot X and maybe adding four and then player dot Y and then maybe adding like six or seven. And then it's going to be like the tile right under him like this. And that would make sense to me. We could totally do it that way. And, you know, since he's levitating, he doesn't really have to like run into things. He can just kind of be over it. You see, see, we just designed this to be a little bit easier, right? We can make harder things with other games. We can keep this one easy. It's no big deal. So, okay, he can till the ground. That's great. But now we need to be able to plant the seeds. And so um, we could say, 
we could test to see what tile he's over. And then if we have our seeds selected or something like that, then we could plant the seeds. For now, we could probably just have him plant seeds and till the ground at once. It's probably not that big of a deal. You know, we're doing a simple, the simplest kind of version of this. So let's actually just make this three. Save, run. And now, bloop, 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 bloop. Great. We've done a pretty good job on both of these. And in the next video, we'll talk about how to make the crops grow. Now, this is something that we could do in a simple way or a difficult way. And you know we're probably going to do the simple way. You know what I'm saying? But let me know if you like this kind of video. Just a really simple little kind of code with me video like this. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll make more. Okay. Till then, if you're just getting into Pico 8, make sure to check out my Pico 8 course, Pico 8 Noob to Pro. It's available now at spacecatdev.com. Thanks so much for watching.